Hello, everyone. I'm today's speaker. I'm Hawk. Welcome, everybody, to join this uh, free training. Today, we will talk about debugging tips. Let me share my uh, slide. Wait a minute. OK. Oh, OK. I think everyone see my PowerPoint slide. Yeah, this is today's topic. And um, I will speak for, uh, introduce this topic about uh, for 40 minutes. And we will have a Q&A section at the end. So uh, please keep muted uh, during uh, this course uh, to avoid affecting others. And uh, yeah, at the end, we will have a Q&A section. You can prepare your questions and X at that moment. So this is our, my outline. Uh, because the, the time is limit, so we won't introduce all of them in details. Yeah, uh, I will introduce every topics for just an overview. So uh, at the beginning, we will, I will talk about general debugging tips. And then I will talk about how to use develop tool to do some simple CSS debugging. And then I will uh, introduce how a dial grant about how you can quickly determine the uh, performance debugging, uh, the, the, bottle, the bottleneck of the performance. Okay, let's start. Yeah, the first one is I want to, uh, my debugging tip is based on this scientific method of debugging. Yeah, this is a uh, uh, steps to debug. Uh, the every province is my general uh, approach, but this is not, uh, is I extracted from this book. Uh, it's, it's, the book is Code Complete. It's written by Stephen McConnell. It's a very good book. I will suggest everyone to, to read it. It's a, it's a very uh, popular, I mean, popular in some aspect. If you know someone will, if someone will uh, raise a uh, list, the top 10, top five programming books, these books must be in, in the list. So in this book, you will it mention about uh, a scientific method of debugging. So it's steps of like uh, stabilize the arrows. So first you need to stabilize the arrow. So it's also the same if you uh, develop a ZK application. Yeah, I assume everybody here that who has some experience of ZK. Uh, so I will assume this. Um, so I won't introduce any ZK, uh, basic how to use ZK. Uh, I, I will assume that you might use ZK and sometimes you might have problems and uh, you need to debug by yourself. So uh, the first you need to stabilize the arrow means you need to find a case steps uh, to reproduce the arrows. It's better to a very clear specific steps. Uh, so it's better to be simplest. So if you can, if there are 10 steps, then it's very a bit complicated, then it's better if you can reduce the 10 steps into a small, uh, fewer steps, maybe three steps. And uh, you can, uh, stable, stable, reproduce it with these three steps. Three steps. That's the first step to debug. It's very uh, the first step you need to do to stabilize the error. There's a stable way, a uh, specific way to reproduce the error. Then the second way is to locate the source of the error. Then you need to gather the data that produce the defects. Maybe uh, including these three steps in my involve several components or specific even listener, something like this, or in maybe it only happens only in a specific browser or in a specific steps. Maybe you change a step and it doesn't happen. So these kind of data is very uh, important. Then you need to, based on this data and the steps, you need to analyze the data and form a hypothesis about a defect. Maybe you think, oh, it only happened on this browser, so it could be uh, the browser specific problem. Uh, or then the next step, when you create a formal hypothesis, 
uh, then you need to prove it. Yeah, you need to prove it. Yeah, uh, you need to check it or do some other step to prove it or disprove it. Say, uh, yes, my hypothesis is wrong or right. And then you confirm, okay, this is the root cause, the source of the error. We, and then you start to think how to fix the defect, how to test the fix, how to look for the similar errors. So because we are the, we are talking about debugging, so we will focus on the first two steps. So need first in when there are uh, when you find a repeatable way to reproduce it, in first case, it's better to narrow down the problem because uh, yeah, but sometimes it's not re repeatable. Then you need to, it's better to find a way to make it repeatable. repeatable. So sometimes not repeatable is because of, there might be a timing issue. For example, when you click very fast or when you do something in, when you, uh, when there's something, there's busy requests and you start scrolling or when you click fast, it, it, it happens and when you click slowly and doesn't happen. So when it's not repeatable, you need to inspect the steps, uh, how you reproduce it. Uh, so it could be some timing issue involved. So you need to change how you reproduce the way you need to reproduce it in a different way uh, and uh, to try to find a very stable way to, a repeatable way to reproduce it. Then the next steps is we suggest to narrow down the problem. Just like I say, if there are 10 steps, okay, then there's very, it involves many things. So there are many factors that involve in, in the 10 steps. So it's very hard. Uh, sometimes it's very hard for you to locate the root cause. So you should narrow down the problem at first stage. Uh, so if you can reduce one, for example, reduce one step, remove one step, and it still can reproduce the same error, that means it's not relevant to that step. So when you reduce the steps to reproduce the problem, it also reduce the potential factors that cause the problem. So uh, you don't need to check that uh, related step. So more factors, the more hypothesis to test. So it will take a long time if you uh, need 10 steps. Yeah, that many components involves, many codes involves. So you need to check every code uh, and many possibilities. So you need to verify uh, many things. So there are several ways in DK to reduce and narrow. So we narrow down the problem, either reduce the component, you can either copy copy the, uh, the page. Uh, maybe you can copy the zoo and uh, remove all the irrelevant components to make it uh, more, uh, make it fewer components. So you don't have to check everyone, every components, or you can reduce the step to reproduce, or you can reduce the vacation logic. Maybe the button you click in about 500, 500 lines of code, it's better you can reduce it or, yeah, just so that you don't need to find the root cause in that 500 lines of code. And then the next steps, uh, if you find a simplest case or simplest steps to reproduce it and how to gather data to form a hypothesis. Yeah, usually, uh, mostly if you, if you know more about uh, assistant, you know more about how to gather data that give a better, that can give a better hypothesis. So it's better if you know your system well, uh, you know it well, you can know, yeah, this part problem could be related to which module, which features. So uh, for ZK, uh, that your system, you need to know it well, but for ZK, uh, you need to know ZK well for how to, you need to know how underlying how, how it works. Then you could uh, form a good hypothesis about a problem. Okay. So let's see uh, the process of when handling the ZKA requests. Usually, the problem usually happens when, when you do something, when you have some interactive with ZK components and 
then something is inspected. So usually when there is a, a page, then it will contain some DOM elements. When you click on click, for example, click a DOM element, maybe a button, you will notify fire event to uh, ZK widgets and the ZK widgets will notify the ZK client engine, which is the JavaScript, and it will send the agent request to the update engine, uh, which is the servlet. And the servlet will fire the event, it will convert a request to a ZK event object and send it to ZK corresponding component. So you can see there's a widget here. If you click the widget and you will fire the corresponding component, and the component will handle the event and also pause the event to the event queue, uh, to the event. And the event will, uh, ZK will look for the event listener. So usually you will re, uh, register event listener or uh, a command masters, then ZK will invoke your masters, your event listener. Then you might, uh, in your event listener, you might access components or you might post another events or you might access other uh, call other service or SS database. Okay, this could all happen. And after that, you could, uh, ZK will collect your um, updates, everything that change a component state, then collect into HTTP response and respond to update engine. The update engine will respond, uh, will put this command to the widgets into a Ajax response and go to the client side. And then the client side engine, uh, the client engine will read those command and call these corresponding widget to update itself. And the widgets will update the corresponding DOM. So this is a whole process of the handling the Ajax request. So by, so need to understand this process so that when there's something happen, you can form a good uh, analysis. Uh, and form a good hypothesis. So uh, you can see through this process, you can separate. There are three categories of, uh, of problems. Uh, it could be, the problem could be client side, or could be network, and could be server side. So all the problems you can uh, basically divide into three categories, either client side, either network, either server side. This is, so ZK problems. The other, another basic idea you need to know is about the, the scope. And uh, I think you everyone know the Java E has session scope and application scope, but in ZK, we also have a, a desktop scope. And a desktop can have, a session can have one or more uh, desktop or can have one or more page and can a page can have one or more component. Uh, but yeah, page, you more, in most cases, you can ignore the page because usually one desktop usually have one just one, one page. So you can ignore this, but the desktop could have multiple components. And every time when you send a request to Azure, ZK will create a desktop object at the, uh, at the server. So this is the, um, the basic idea. But uh, this desktop is only create when you visit Azure. And if you interact with a component that will fire event, the event will send an HS request. In this case, it doesn't create a new component. Yeah, it just be used to send, uh, it just fire the request to, to the send desktop. Okay, only when you press, for example, FI or reload the whole page, then ZK will drop the previous desktop and create a new one. Uh, then the previous desktop is dropped. Okay. So yeah, the one session could have multiple desktop, desktop could have multiple pages. Yeah, so this is, uh, this see a very simple example. This is a, a scope. So if we print, for example, this is scope rule. If we print it, uh, session desktop page, yeah, you can see, and you can insert by applied with another zool, or you can include another zool, or you can include another zool with iFriends. Uh, for this different case, you can see uh, 
as these sections, you can see this is the same section in the same page, right? So in the desktop, this is a desktop ID here. And all you can see they are in the same desktop ID uh, unless in iframe. So in iframe, actually, if you include an iframe, actually is in another desktop. Okay. And in when you use um, template ejection, it's still in the same desktop. And when you include things with instant mode, it's still in the same desktop. Okay. So this is about the scope. So the basic scope is ZK desktop. So it's the largest scope defined by ZK. So it's a uh, it's a smaller is scope smaller than section. So one section can have multiple desktop. So you can imagine that a, a desktop is a browser tab. One browser tab will create one desktop. Another browser tab will create a new desktop. So you can imagine this like this. So uh, each HTML, HTTP request to a zoo will create a new desktop object. And all the subsequent AJS requests are sent to the same desktop. And that AJ request won't change to browser URL. Okay. So ZK components, controllers, including composer or view model are in the same desktop scope. So when you reload the page, the desktop will drop, that means all these desktop scope components, uh, objects like composer, view model, components are dropped either. So ZK will, when you reload your ZK will recreate user components, uh, recreate this composer. So everything is reset. So when you reload, you can find that everything is reset to the initial state, including your composer or ZK component. Okay, so the next step to uh, of debug is to locate. After you, you find a way to reproduce it, then you will uh, think, okay, they will form a hypothesis and reduce the component. Then you need to locate the source of the error. And the first, uh, the first uh, useful way and important way is to uh, collect error message. is very important. So. Uh, because there are usually there are some uh, customers that sometimes they get get want to get help on this. You always say, okay, there's some problem, something doesn't work. I don't see something happen, and he didn't check any service side or client side error message. Usually, those error messages will give you a better hints to let you know the root cause. So collect error message is very important and easy to ignore, but be sure to open your develop tools uh, to see if there's a client side JavaScript error message or to or there's is there any server side error message. So usually uh, don't make your server console have many warning message messages because those if there are lots of warning messages, if there's one error inside it among hundreds of warnings, usually it's easy to be ignored. So it's better to eliminate um, the warning. So uh, for example, there's a typical common errors as you can see in this cases, it's illegal state, ASS denied component, some component belong to another desktop. There are some, uh, this is a, a previous customer case yeah, so they found this. So maybe you ever see these these arrows. That means if you declare, the root cause is if you declare a variable in a composer and you declare as a static, that means two composers will share one component. So, uh, or their a component is passed by event queue to another desktop and another desktop call a setter to this component that you will produce this kind of error. Yeah, just like I say, yeah, the desktop is a belong to represent a browser tab. So a component is also a desktop scope. So it's limited to a tab, uh, to a specific browser tab. So you cannot, a two composer belong to two browser tabs. So if they share the same components, that's incorrect. 
Uh, so you, if you, that means usually the the second desktop will override the first uh, the first variable. So when you iterate, when you access, it will call the setter. The component will try to uh, send response uh, to the first tab. If you, yeah, if you uh, share the 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 same component in two tabs, then the component only belong to one tab, then you cannot, if you access another tab, you will produce this kind of illegal state exception. So uh, you cannot declare a static variable in a composer world. So you will produce this problem. So don't do this. Another common errors, sometimes you will see a JavaScript errors. Yeah. So. A JavaScript error usually means there might be a potential bug of a component because most of you just calling Java API and JavaScript API is uh, usually called by our internal JavaScript widget, by ZK widget. So if you don't have any custom JavaScript file, if you have, you please check. Usually uh, those custom JavaScript file or Java patch or custom Java widget will break or you upgrade. Uh, after upgrade, because something, some implement implementation change between versions, and uh, it's not easy to identify it, the JavaScript change. So please check. And if you don't have this custom JavaScript file or custom widget, that means uh, it could be a bug of ZK. So please um, report. You need to open a develop tool and uh, copy the whole complete stack trace and tell us what's uh, reported back. So we will give you a, maybe a patch or half fix. But before you extract that complete state trace, be, remember to enable the debug JS true, uh, because by default, if you don't enable this option, the JavaScript will be compressed and uh, obfuscated. So every variable, lots of variables will be unreadable. So it's very hard to identify the problem. So it's better you can uh, turn it true. So it's easy to understand. If you want to know what happened, it's also uh, better to turn it true so you can make your JavaScript readable. Yeah, it's not, it will contain comments and everything is uh, more readable. And the next basic concept you need to know is about the A request. Because when you click a button or do anything, the ZK will fire ages request. And at this ages request, uh, the special the special ages request in ZK we call a synchronous update because you will fire to the event, the event might send something back. And this ages request it hand is handled by the the select. Okay, so uh, the HTML they select. So you can see uh, there are some special command here. So let's see in the real case. I mean, for example, here, there is a example called AU. And when we open the develop tool, you can press the F12 uh, in Chrome or in Firefox. And there's a network tab here. Uh, if you want to see any, if there's any JavaScript error, please, use the uh, see the console tab. And you can see the network tab and there are many different filters. You can use XHR to see the HS request only. If you click all, uh, select all then you will list all the requests Then will be, sometimes will be too many. So you can click the A request. So when you click here, for example, click the open, uh, here you can see you will fire ages request and they uh, always start with zkau uh, sorry end with zkau and start with the uh, the web server side and the con context path and zkau so in here how you can see it every a request has a specific format you can check its payload you will also it will contain at least these kind of fields. For example, DTID means the desktop ID. And every time, if you don't reload this page, every time it will uh, 
sent with the same Dex hub ID. So you can see it always has the same Dex ID. But if I reload it, uh, yeah, you can see it's a different Dex hub ID. Okay, because the deck previous data is dropped. And the command means the event name. So the there is an open event, an open event. So it's the command name is an open. And the UID is the element, the UID of the unique ID of the element of this event. So if you search for CGN, I search for this, we can see this is the UID of the element. So it's a group box UID. Yeah, if I hover on it, you can see there's a highlight in the page. That means, okay, this is this event, uh, event target. Okay. And the next one is the data. Data is, uh, is event dependent. Every event has a carry, carry different data. So for an open is carry is true or false. So you can see I fire three different A requests. And the first time is true, second is false and true. So you file this data to the server. Server will know, okay, you are open, uh, open uh, group box or close the group box. And if you click a button, you can see it has a different event name, but with the same desktop ID, it's on click and has a different UID because it happens on the button. So you can see this is the button. Okay, oh, sorry. The button and the data is about the clicking position. So, so this is about the AU requests. So AU requests have this kind of specific format. So first, when you have some problems when interact with ZK component, first things you need to check is, does this send the expected AU request? If it doesn't send, then must be something wrong, maybe the a event listener doesn't register correctly, maybe the uh, there is something wrong to avoid the component or client engine to send uh, a request, there's, there's something wrong. So, um, but yeah, so first things you need to check is, does it send a request uh, expectedly? But sometimes, right, there are some special case that it doesn't send, uh, their request because we have to uh, ZK have some optimization policy to send the air request because some air requests is not so important. So there are some air requests there are we, we separated uh, classified into several categories. For example, there's a non deferable events that means it's very urgent. You have to send it immediately without waiting. For example, on render on data loading, you have to send immediately. These this event is sent when you scroll uh, a list box or a grid because it's render on demand. So you will get to render on the 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 other uh, the incoming items or to load the incoming data. You want to you 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 are about to scroll. So it will send immediately without waiting anything. So to get the the subsequent data or the rest of the data items. There are some important events like unchanged. So you will also send, even there's no listener register. So when you uh, change, uh, type something in the, date in the text box or any input um, components, when you leave the focus out of the component, you will send the event to the server. Even you don't register any listeners. And this is to synchronize the, the value between the client and server. And there are some deferrable events, means there's not very important if no one uh, is not so important. So usually uh, it will be queued at the client side and send with other non deferrable events. Yeah, so uh, for example, there are some event uh, is not so important. So when you send, when ZK send on change, you also send other events. So if there are there are some more uh, more important and uh, less important events in none about this case, so it doesn't even send the the event send the request if you don't register any event listeners. The EK will just drop or don't send a request because you don't listen. That means it's not important. So we don't waste the bandwidth. 
And the second thing is a response. When you send a request, the ZK will process and send a response to the client to let it change the DOM elements. It also has a specific uh, like a JSON-like format. So you can see um, there is a, if I click this, the screen, I click this, it will set disable to the first button. So you can see in the response, it's called set ATTR, means set attribute. Set attribute to what? To disable, because it's, I call set disable. So if you see my source, you can see here, I call set disable to the button one. Uh, so this is disabled. So we call it center, it will generate a, a command called set ATTR, disable, set it true. And I click again, you will set it false. And this is the UID of the first button. So when you click a button, you will generate the expected. The second thing you need to check is, does it generate the expected uh, the response? So for example, if I click, click me, there's a, a notification here. So you can see show notification, click. Yeah, so it's the data from the server. So it's very, um, very clear that you, if there's nothing, if it, the response contain nothing or contain uh, unexpected thing, you need to check your server call. So the third one is if you call something render, because for example, this is in false one, I cause to enforce to re-render the whole box by calling validate. But sometimes other things might also cause re-render not have to be, not have to call invalidate, but there are other case. So in this case, you will see there's an outer command means it, it re-rendered the whole thing. So you can see it will uh, generate all the uh, the component, including the group box and its children like button, 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 the three buttons. So you can see a lots of component names with its uh, related data because it needs to re-render everything. So it uh, send uh, required data from the server to let the, the client side to re-render the, the whole page, the every component. Okay, so this is a response. So you can see there are many, there are several cases you need to know. So you can check a request, a response. There are other response like RM means remove, remove components. So if you, do something, call some API to remove component, you will respond this kind of response, uh, remove, and this is UID. And ADD child, I think uh, CHD you can, yeah, so you can guess it's a uh, add child. Sometimes, for example, when you uh, expand a child tree items and you will add some child here, so you can see it will respond to add child and uh, in the tree item, tree role, tree cell. So, you can see this expected response uh, by checking this uh, request and response. This is the, your first uh, debugging tips, uh, debugging steps. You can check is there any uh, expected request or expected response. And if this not, it doesn't contain expected things you need to yeah, check. And if you are using MVVN, there's a similar things. But it, because the server side, there's a, there's a, many things happen between the uh, the the view and the component. Uh, the ZK will do many things in uh, loading, uh, declaring, uh, binding, and loading data between the view components and view model. It's all happen internally, so it's very sometimes very hard to to debug debug because it also, it happens internally in ZK. So it's better you can enable this kind of debugger factory. So there's a debug factory, you need to enable it. By enable it, you can see, ZK will print those logs uh, to what ZK do during the MVVN running. So for this case, If you revisit this page, it's written by MVVN. So you can see here, it will print 
some initial binding, you will print it. What happened? The view model description filter by to value. So we can see there's a uh, description filter by to value attribute. You will print all the binding it add. So you can know, okay, yeah, the binding is established correctly. Then next step, when you do something, uh, click interact, then you can see will has also print some interaction between uh, the binding. So you will say, okay, what event happened on change event happened, then it do the same binding, then you do the command, and this is the command life cycle. So you can know what happened internally to help you uh, debug, to help you find out uh, the expected scene, does it happen or not? So this is because you cannot see these uh, interaction between in your code, in your view model. So it's better to turn on this and to see what happened. Okay, so this is the, the way. And now let's see some case study. Uh, this case study is based on a uh, true story. It's based on your real customer case. We just rewrite it. For the first case is a timer. Uh, there's a timer case here. So uh, one day some customer, uh, someone sent me, say he used a timer in this page and the timer should send one second, uh, should, uh, one second update, update this page one second uh, once. But he asked me why it doesn't show any update messages. So let's discuss, uh, let's, let me check. I will get, I get his file and check and to see what happened. So does anyone know what's the first step we need to check in this case? You can type in the chat. Does anyone know? According to my previous explanation, what's the first step to, to check, to debug? You can type text in the chat or you can, you can open your mic to speak a short answer. Does anyone want to say something? What's the first step when we check and when we debug? Okay, the first step is, yeah, to open the develop tool. And then the first step we need to check is to check the A request. Does it send as expected? So we can check here. Okay, maybe reload the page. You can see, okay, there's a rule request. There's a ZKWPD request, and then nothing happened. That means there's no A request happens. That, but the timer should be updated every one second. So you should fire a request for every one second. So this is a very, uh, very this is the first step we need to check. Okay, there's no a request fire. So surely there's no, uh, no update. So that's because this person is a newcomer. He doesn't know, yeah, he need to, he, I don't know why he called stop. He called stop at this page, so the timer just stop, so it doesn't fire. So after I remove the call, you can see every time you will send, uh, every one second it will send a request here, so you can see the update message show correctly as expected. So this is the first step you can check. Okay, so this is our uh, first case study. So yeah, maybe you think, oh, this is a very, Dump example is, uh, yeah, how can he just stop a timer and doesn't know by himself? Uh, I don't know either, but sometimes maybe people just copy past code and doesn't know what happened. So it could happen, so you can check. And the second one, second case is a closing tag box. So the closing tag box that uh, we can check, okay. The closing tab box, uh, yeah, also a, a true story. So there's someone, they send me a case that's when he types something here, and then he want to add a new tab. The second tab appeared, but every time he add a new tab, the first tab just closed. 
and he doesn't want this. Why it always close? So how to debug this, this case? What's the first step? Yeah, I think the first step is still open the develop tool and uh, check the network tab and uh, reproduce again. So first we click reproduce it. We click uh, the glue box and we type something. Okay. And we click the egg tab and it close. So we can check. Uh, first we check the, the A request. You can see we uh, there's an open because we click glue box and then there's an unchanged because we type something and leave the focus. So it's unchanged. So this is expected. And the second is on click. Okay, it's also expected because I clicked the add tab. So in the first uh, a request is expected, let's check the response. It's empty because yeah, there's nothing change at the, from the server side. So when I click the open a group box and type something, nothing happened from the server side. But at the second time, when I add the tab, it's, this is, there are some lots of response you can see. What happened? Do you know what happened? There's a special command here to cause this problem. Does anyone, anyone can spot it? What's the, what happened in this case? Yes, it's refresh the outer element. So you can see it's, there's the outer. So no matter what, it's just invalidates or re-rendering. So let's check this, uh, this case. You can see, um, so every time when you re-render because the group box is false. Uh, if you check the group box here, it's open, it's false. So when you re-render, he re-render re based on the server's uh, data, server state. So the open is false, so every time you re-render, you will close the group, group box. That's the expected. But why it's re render the whole things? That's need to be so we need to check the root cause of why you render. So that's that's the reason. So then, yeah. So you have to check the reason is we in this new model it used uh, sorry it used the Java collection instead of list model list. Yeah, this is the root cause. Yeah, because the time uh, is short, so I don't expect too too much in this case. Let's go into the next uh, next topic about the CSS uh, debugging. So for CSS debugging, you can yeah rely on the you need to heavily rely on the tool developer tool. At Chrome, Firefox, and yeah, don't, don't, I think you don't use IE now. So in Chrome or Firefox, just press F12. And the develop tool can let you inspect and check CSS class. So let's try, for example, uh, in this case, you open a develop tool, you can click this inspect. Firefox also has a similar feature. So you can hover on these items to know uh, what it, what it corresponding uh, area in the page. So you can see here there is uh, the CSS the CSS rules. So you can check here. So for the for ZK you can see every if this rules comes from ZK or from the the themes. Maybe some of you will use a custom theme built by yourself, but all. If it comes from scene, no matter it's a building scene or default scene or custom scene, it will show its source is ZK WCS because ZK will come will merge all the CSS rules into one file to reduce the request a process sent. So uh, it will merge into one WCS. It contains all the components um, CSS. Uh, so you can you can see it's very is very long because it's compressed. So for this, you can click this format uh, to make it beauty. So you can see it's a very long CSS. It contains every uh, component. 
So if you see these kind of these rows come from the WCS, that means it's a uh, it's a default CSS rule from zk. So you can preview it's what happened here. So you can uncheck this, for example, uh, zk tip box. We can uncheck it's uh, we can uncheck it's oh no. For example, I can check its background here, so you can see the results. So if you want to do something, uh, change some CSS, find some CSS problem, you can check or uncheck here to make it display in your browser. You can see the result here. So for example, I can change the border to five. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. It should be five pixel, five pixel. Yeah, something like this. I can change the margin to 10. Oh, sorry. So we will real time reflect on this page. Surely it just affects uh, the browser in the local. So when you reload this page, it, okay. Uh, I changed something. Oh, okay, this is, there's a typo, okay. Surely when you reload the page that everything you change will be, will lost, uh, will be lost because it's just changed your local in your browser. So you can check the CSS rule here. You can add new rules. For example, I can add high something, uh, for example, 500 pixel like this and it will affect, I can cancel it. So you can customize, when you customize a uh, component, you can try here and then apply to your page uh, in the end. And so you can expect, you can try, you can debug here to see what happened, what's the size you can see. Uh, there's a size, there's the border, there's padding. So if you, uh, think the size is different or the style is, is unexpected, you can check here to see what happened, what's the current size. And every ZK uh, component have its, uh, its own class. It's, it's a, it has a naming convention. It always start with Z dash and uh, with component names. So you can see the Z dash tabs, Z dash default labels. Okay, so this is, if you see this, you can see, okay, it's from ZK. Uh, or if you see other class, then it might be your custom things. So this is how you can use the develop tool to check the rule, the thesis rule. You can add rule, remove rule. Uh, yeah. And also you can see the computed rule means the, it's the, because there are lots of CSS rules in usually in a, in an elements. So it extend by, uh, in, inherit from browser default and there are lots of uh, rules affect on the same elements. You can see on the higher position, it has higher priority. So this, if something, some rules here, it will override the rule below. So if you see there's a strike through, then means this rule is never affected, it will be, it's overridden, override by the higher priority rules. So uh, you don't need to calculate this result by yourself. There's a computed result here. So if you, there are multiple, if there are multiple rules that affect one, one CSS property, we can check here. For example, you can see uh, the background color. When it's highlight, uh, that means there is a rule affected this. If it's grayed out, means it's used a browser default. So you can see the, for example, you can see uh, height, you can search. So you can know, okay, line height now is 24 pixels and it's affected by these rules. And maybe there are sometimes there are multiple rules, so then they will list them all and you can see of which one is highest, profit, highest priority and you can know uh, which one affect this. So you can know uh, you can know where to change it and modify it to 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 fix the CSS problem. So you don't need to calculate it priority by yourself. You need you can just check this. Okay. 
So you will know the source and the priority. Okay. Let's see the the final uh the final re the final topic is about the performance debugging. Yeah. So let's show my slide. The performance debugging could be uh like uh like what I say previously. The ZK architecture is involving client and the server. So the performance debugging, the first things you need to do is to locate the bottlenecks. So it could be client site, it could be network, could be server. So you need to determine this at first. Then there is a simple rules, a simple way, a quick way to determine the the problem is to check with developer tool. Let's show you the develop tool. When you send a request, request, actually there's a timing tab you can see. So it, it will show the timing of this request, say uh, how many times when you when it send this request or when you hover on here, uh, here, it also show the timing here. So you can quickly preview here. And the timing has its meaning. It means uh, this is from uh, Google, from Chrome's explanation. Uh, so you can say, uh, you can see there's initial connecting time. If this is long, that means there's something had problem at server. And this is a waiting time. The waiting time means it start cal calculated time from the from request sent and until it goes to the server and counts back to as a time to first buy. So it start counting from when from the request sent and end counting after he received the first byte. So it's a treat, round trip time. So it's a waiting time. If the waiting time is long, usually means that it, it either it's a takes a long network time or it's the server, usually is the server processing time is long. So the waiting time will be long. Okay, so you can check this timing to know what happened. So the, the basic uh, way, the quick simple way to check the timing. If the waiting time is long, that usually means the server is doing too much things or unexpected long things. So let's see uh, the performance, the, case, uh, for example, this one. Okay, let's check the simple one. Okay, so when you click, a button, for example, or fire any request, you can see there is a timing. So you can click this and see the timing to see, okay, it's when it's sent, the request is very short, just several milliseconds, but that's waiting time is very long because it's, it takes three seconds. Yeah, sure, the, the long, it depends on the case by case, but yeah, in this case, oh, it's very long because it just show a message. So we can know that there must be something, the bottleneck is at server. So we need to check the server, why it takes so long to process the request. Okay, so this is a quickest way to check uh, what's happening. So there's a, in our document, there is a page, uh, there's a diagram to let you, uh, a decision diagram to let you uh, diagnose the, the bottleneck. So you can quickly check through this. Um, so let me explain quickly. For example, there's a long running request. If the request is not long, that means it's come, it's when it's sent to the server and come back very soon. So it means it's very quick that it could be a client side issue. So it means server response very quick. So you can go through this diagram to see there are four phases. Uh, which phase is slow, could be sending slow or connecting slow or uh, waiting slow or receiving low. Each one has different uh, meanings. 
So for example, the most cases waiting time is long. So waiting time is long, usually it's a, it's a server issue. The server process is long. Or if the connecting time is long, you can check is it there is there a network uh, network problem? If there's no network problem, that could be a server issue. If there's a network problem, that means it's a network issue. So you can classify your problem, could be a server issue, could be a network issue, or could be client side issue. And for each server issue or client side issue, uh, you know the server is slow, but you have to do a profiling to know what exactly, uh, what thing is exactly slow. So that's another topic. Okay. So I think uh, I give you a quick review, a quick introduction, introduction about this uh, debugging tips. Is there any questions today? You can type your question in the chat or you can just turn on your microphone to uh, speak out your questions. Or is there any ZK related questions that yeah, we open for several minutes to uh, to let you ask some questions? You can type the questions uh, in the chat. Remember to set to send to everyone and. Uh, Okay. I saw someone open the mic and you can speak your question if you want. Okay, if no one has any question, then thank you for joining this course today. That's um, welcome you to join the next course. Yeah, just keep in touch to uh, to notice our news or publication. We will uh, notify you about the next course. Uh, thank you for today's joining. Thank you for your time. That's uh, see you next time. Goodbye. Bye-bye, thank you. Bye. Thank you.